Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and you might hear the AC in the background. It's January 1st, but it's Texas, so it's already getting hot outside. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I've been working my way through the James Bond movies in the most mentally ill way imaginable. Even if you have OCD like me, I have to explain my logic. So I saw No Time to Die, which means I had seen all of the Daniel Craig movies. So I was like, let me just watch the entire series. So since I had seen GoldenEye and bits of Pierce Brosnan, I went and watched all of those. Okay, so I'm moving backwards. Then I decided to start at the beginning and watch Roger Moore, but I got a little, or no, uh, Sean Connery, but I got a little bored. <laughs> so I quit after the third one to watch, now you might say, George Lazenby. No, it was Roger Moore. Now you might say I watched them in chronological order, but no, in my mind, uh, since I went to, I saw, uh, I've been listening to the James Bond theme songs, so sometimes people do like fan um, remakes of it, where they'll do, it's actually pretty cool. They basically make their own version of the movie. It's like a music video, but it's not the original music video, but it's just using the scenes. So I saw A View to a Kill, the fan remix uh, Duran Duran song uh, video, and I was like, that looks okay. So then I watched the last Roger Moore movie, then I worked my way backwards through the Roger Moore movies, and then I went and I watched the Timothy Dalton movies in order. Wow! <laughs> oh man, that is completely insane. Uh, so anyway, I watched both of them, there's only two. There's The Living Daylights and uh, License to Kill. Although Wikipedia says it was called License Revoked in the UK, but I've, I've never seen any evidence of that. There's a lot of, when you watch these, I mean, I watch on Amazon Prime, so it, it will give like these, uh, you know, video uh, uh, trivia on the side. And like, I'm watching On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and they're like, they talk to uh, Timothy Dalton about, what? It was in 1969, he would have been like 20. I don't, what? I don't believe that. So anyway, Roger Moore uh, stopped uh, with A View to a Kill in 1985. And then they had, um, uh, oh my gosh, The Living Daylights in 1987. And they had uh, License to Kill in 1989. And then there were no James Bond movies for six years. Now, I actually went with my family Back in the day where families would go to the movies like two or three times a year, like, you know, usually you see whatever George Lucas or Spielberg made, and then one or two other. So we went to go see uh, License to Kill, and I hated it. It just felt like a two cheap episodes of Miami Vice, you know, projected on a movie screen. So, and I did not like Timothy Dalton. I, even as a kid, it really bothered me that he had a receding hairline. Like, it just bothered me. I was like, James Bond is a fantasy character. You're supposed to want to be him. I don't want to be some dour guy with a freaking widow's peak. It's like, you know, wear a wig, come on, something, or get a guy with good hair. Uh, so, and it was just boring. And like, the last 30 minutes are like these semi-trailer truck stunts. You're like, what is this? this is a, it, so, um, but I would consistently hear when I started talking about James Bond, the like tried and true James Bond fans, they would always say, they're like, Timothy Dalton is the best James Bond. If you read the novels, he's the one that's closest to the, to, you know, the real original James Bond. Now I haven't read the novels, but I've you know, done some research into them. And it, it does seem like that's true. Everyone else is kind of like, bemused. <laughs> well, Daniel Craig is just kind of bored of being Bond almost from the beginning. Uh, but everyone else seems like bemused that they're Bond. It's like they ironically know that they're a character and they're like, oh, this is just light entertainment. Um, but, you know, in the world of Bond, Bond doesn't, isn't bemused by being himself. So, um, uh, so all the, like, quote, real James Bond fans, like almost all of them say the same thing. They're like, Timothy Dalton was the best James Bond. That's what James Bond is actually like. 
Uh, so I was like, okay, that's interesting because I remember as a kid seeing his second movie. My assumption was always that people just didn't like him for the same reasons I didn't like him. But I guess, it, no, it was some sort of rights issues and funding. It, it, was, it was basically boring business and legal stuff that delayed making the third movie. And then by the time it was to make the third movie, it had been so long that they needed to do another contract. And instead of saying, you know, you've got one more on your three picture deal, they're like, well, it's been so long, let's start another three picture deal. By that time, Timothy Dalton is in his mid 40s. And you know, he's being told he's going to be Bond until he's 50. And he's just like, nah, I'll sign for one, but I'm not signing for three. So then they went and got Pierce Brosnan. Uh, so I watched them in order, <laughs> like a normal person. And I've got to say, The Living Daylights was freaking awesome. Now, yeah, there are a couple dumb parts. At one point, he has a laser that cuts a car. Like, you have to see it. Like, in, I can see how the screenwriter thought it would work, but like, it cuts a car, but then the chassis goes off of, or what do you call it? The body goes off the chassis, but the tires aren't cut. It's stupid. Anyway, so it's, uh, it's a soft reboot. No, it's not even a soft reboot. It's a I don't know. A soft reboot, reboot basically means you're starting over, usually kind of like lower expectations, but they do establish continuity that he was married before, which he was in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. So uh, they're not saying this is a new Bond, even though he's, you know, younger than... Uh, you're just supposed to imagine that all of the Bonds have been in all of the other Bond adventures, just, you know, looking like themselves. So, like, it's, it's hard to imagine Timothy Dalton in Moonraker, <laughs> but, I can't, but apparently, you know, in the continuity, you know, that had happened. So uh, this one, they did uh, start with a new Money Penny. By the way, not to be mean, but it was absolutely shocking to me when I skipped to A View to a Kill and you saw the same actress playing Money Penny for like 22 years. And she's just like this old lady, like flirting and being like single. It's like, oh, that's depressing. So they recast, um, Bond, Money Penny, uh, although she's she's barely in these movies, um, and uh, uh, not Q, was M recast? I can't tell any of the M's apart <laughs> until they uh, Dame Judi Dench. Like they're all just like old stuffy white dudes, which I think is you know probably makes sense you know for that role. Uh, but so The Living Daylights was just like freaking awesome. I think even if you don't like James Bond you will like this movie. Now, I actually really like the Daniel Craig era, uh, but, uh, well, right now, Roger Moore is my favorite, and I'll do a whole video on the Roger Moore era. But um, I really like the Daniel Craig era a lot. And The Living Daylights, it literally feels like they're doing like a dry run of what they would later do with uh, Daniel Craig. It's like they just needed to see Jason Bourne. They're like, okay, so it's like The Living Daylights tone plus Jason Bourne, and that's, that's what we'll do. And then, you know, more style, stylish uh, cinematography. So it's Bond, he's on a mission, you know, it's still during the Cold War, even though it's at the end. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a Bond thing. There's a Russian general, he's defecting, he's not defecting, there's an arms dealer. But mainly it's just like, it's just good. Just from the beginning, it's just good. Um, uh, Dalton is like, you know, focused. Uh, he's, you know, obviously a lot more serious than Roger Moore. Uh, they have some uh, good uh, Bond girls, good set pieces. Even just like at little points, there's just like a there's an escape in a in a oil pipeline, and even just like the set for the end of the oil pipeline and this little capsule they go in, like everything was just cool. <laughs> Usually, I have better uh, uh, detail when I'm reviewing stuff, but I watch so many of the movies lately, they kind of uh, blend in. What I'm saying, the best thing about the Living Daylights is the tone. It's fairly relentless. It's, you know, we're on the job, we're on a mission. We get to meet another double O. I always like when they meet another double O. Uh, I forget what this double O's number was. I, I mean, I haven't seen all the movies. You see a double O, you know, dressed like a clown who gets killed in a beauty a kill. You see uh, an ex double O as a villain in Goldeneye. No, those guys at the beginning of Casino Royale, they weren't double O's. They were just like regular, you know, uh, spies. Uh, 
But uh, so we meet another one, and they've got kind of an interesting, like the other one is just, you can tell they're both alpha, so they're competitive. But he's, he's, the other double O is kind of like more serious. But um, uh, the pace is great, uh, all the actions, the tone, like it doesn't get too crazy or too silly. I do remember like when they're like, this is a ghetto blaster. Everyone loved that joke back in the day. And then they don't use it ever. <laughs> like, but um, it's, it's just kind of great. There's a lot of elements of the novels from what I've heard, but the stuff I like from Daniel Craig. Um, so I kind of loved like the, the movies that I would rewatch this. Like I wouldn't rewatch any of the Roger Moore, although Never Say Never Again was actually pretty good. Um, but I would definitely rewatch uh, The Spy Who Loved Me, uh, For Your Eyes Only. Those two were excellent. And I would definitely rewatch The, the Living Daylights just for fun. Uh, it was great. I understand my description of it wasn't that great besides just seeing it. It was good and I liked the tone and the everything. He, at one point he has a sniper rifle and it's like the coolest sniper rifle I've ever seen. Oh, you just got to see it. That actually also kind of re reminded me of the, uh, the tone of the Mission Impossible movies where it was like spy, but it was somehow more grounded, even though it, it you know, it's a little hard to believe with the stunts. But yeah, it kind of reminds me of a, the tone of like the Tom Cruise mission, like the later Mission Impossible movies where they kind of started directing them all like with the same director and stuff like that. Then we got License to Kill. And this is a rough one because, like I said, it feels like two episodes of Miami Vice. It's set almost entirely in uh, uh, Bahamas, Key West area. And it starts off with, okay, first of all, what is the deal with Felix Leiter? How many Felix Leiters have there been? And then there's like Felix Leiters who aren't Felix Leiter. Like they have that guy in gold now. You're like, oh, this is Felix Leiter. It's like, no, it's a different CIA guy. So anyway, they had one Felix Leiter in The Living Daylights, and he was okay. And then in the next movie, two years later, they have a completely different Felix Leiter, who's like 20 years older than the previous guy. And it's just weird, like, don't do that. Uh, but anyway, Felix, uh, uh, James Bond is at the wedding of Felix, and then uh, fairly brutally, the, the, the bride is killed, and then freaking Felix has his freaking leg eaten by a shark. Um, one of the things I'm really realizing watching all the older James Bond movies is, you know how Daniel Craig, they call him commander like three times in five movies and they just imply he was just some sort of SAS guy before? Like, no, in this one, like, he's Commander Bond, so there's gonna be a lot of stuff with uh, ships, uh, submarines, underwater uh, vehicles, lots of scuba diving, lots of just being near beaches. So this one, there's a lot of water stunts. And actually, for the first hour, it's like, it's pretty legit. Um, there's some, uh, you know, uh, Timothy Dalton, I don't know if I'd call him athletic, but I guess he's okay, okay shape. They also found a stuntman that looks like exactly like him, like the exact same body frame. So there's like some cool stunts with a, a, a plane and climbing into a plane. And, and uh, so it, that stuff matches very well, which I liked. There's also one point that I really like when uh, he, he goes through an elaborate action sequence and then he's essentially, you know, one, you know, he's, he's escaping with the plane and some money and he just laughs. And this is like, having been in combat, like I've seen that laugh. It's just like, holy shit, I'm still alive. That's crazy. <laughs> so you don't usually see that with uh, action stars and you might think for a more, you know, dour, serious portrayal of Bond that he wouldn't laugh like that. But when I saw that laugh, I was like, I know that laugh. I've done that laugh. Like, oh, I'm, yeah, that's, that's like a very real like combat thing, that weird, like weirdly happy laugh. Like after you're like, oh shit, I'm not dead. But um, it's got some good bits. It's got, uh, actually Robert Davi is just excellent, but it's just weird. They introduce a televangelist into it out of nowhere. And like, <laughs> they've done this a couple times in Bond movies where they shoot on a location that is very obviously not in the country it's supposed to be in. And then they'll be like, we had it moved brick by brick. It's like, really? And then the algae on the mortar between the bricks like matches, like, no, I know they've done that. It's like for smaller, simpler structures. They don't do like Versailles. It's like, oh, uh, is this a France? No, it's Louisiana. We had Versailles moved brick by brick. <laughs> And if you did assemble it, it would look like shit. 
Um, uh, they do that in uh, Moonraker as well. But th the tone is uneven, and then like it literally feels, so with movies a lot of times, it's not just you know the studio just giving you a giant Scrooge McDuck pot of money, it's you know, this consortium and these Chinese guys and these German guys and these Israeli guys and, and they all chip, chip in. And it feels like it was somebody's turn. They're like, okay, okay, freaking uh, Germany, it's your turn to pay for the finale. And they're like, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it feels like they just ran out of money. So being you know a fairly good budget and a fairly good movie for the first half, at the second half, it just gets like cheap, like really cheap. It seems like a episode of Renegade or something like that. And also like they're doing these stunts with semi-trailers, but like the trucks are moving really, really slow and they're not, they're not very good at hiding that. So it's like, okay, um, so it completely devolves to, to the point where it really, really became a chore. And honestly, I don't remember, at least in America, I don't remember anyone clamoring for a next James Bond, really missing that it had been six years since the last one. And I remember everyone being happy when it was announced that Pierce Brosnan was the new James Bond. So is it a recommend? I mean, obviously, if you're a completionist, you've already seen both of them. I would definitely say The Living Daylights. And I mean, here's the funny thing. Everyone I know hates James Bond. Every time I bring this up, they just, they roll their eyes like, I hate James Bond movies. It's like, they do really well, somebody likes them, somebody does. Um, uh, so even if you hate James Bond, definitely recommend The Living Daylights. It's, it's, it's really awesome. And I think what I did like about it is it's almost more like a Mission Impossible movie where uh, the tone, you have to see it to see what I'm talking about. Um, I really can't recommend License to Kill. There's some cool stunts in there. You just go on YouTube and find that scene. Just type in Living Daylights airplane bond or something like that and you'll see like a, some cool stunts there's actually some cool kills in there um uh and it just doesn't work as a whole there's something kind of weird and off about it and it's it's just kind of like a bummer man but um overall and i'm not even kidding timothy uh timothy hairline timothy dalton's hairline in the sec it's only two years after the last movie and he, he lost a bunch of hair and they're, they literally like comb it straight. No, he's a fantasy character. You know, he, he, he does not, he shouldn't look like a divorce lawyer, which is what he looks like. Um, uh, so that's why wigs and toupees and hair systems uh, matter. It's a visual medium and it's a fantasy genre, even though, you know, it's, it's spy. It's a fantasy because nobody really lives a life like that. Um, so uh, I can't recommend both of them. Definitely recommend Living Daylights and yeah, License to Kill. No. So uh, next video will probably be uh, What's Wrong with On Her Majesty's uh, Secret Service. Thanks for watching. Bye.